Hi, I'm Sebin Yakov. This presentation is entitled Calculating the Inductance of a DC Biased Inductor. This is a joint work of myself and Evgeny. I'd like to point out that there are some related videos at the YouTube channel Sam Ben Yaakov and if you search for inductor you'll find quite a number of videos related to the inductor, design of inductor and some other issues. In this video we are presenting some background of air-gapped ferrite core inductors point to the reason why the inductance is a function of the DC current, calculating the dependence of the inductance on the DC current. We're going to show a Excel spreadsheet to do the calculation and then to show some of the results. Make sure not to miss the animation at the end of this video, which is, I think, very nice. Let me start with some notation here. L sub B is the magnetic path length within the ferrite. Here it is sort of folded. This is an E core and here it's sort of folded back to back. And L sub G is the length of the air gap, while A sub E is the cross section area of the core. Now L sub F is the length of magnetic path length of the ferrite itself, which is the total length minus the length of the air gap. Manufacturers are providing the BH curve of various material. Here is showing 3694. This is a typical hysteresis loop of the material. Notice there is a difference here in the scaling. This is why it looks kind of uh, strange. Now if we take the average of this, uh, disregarding the hysteresis width, we'll get the average behavior and the derivative, the local derivative, is the so-called reversible mu or relative magnetic permeability. Of course, as we go up with the H magnetic field, then the slope is changing, and this is the reason, in fact, why the inductor will change its, its inductance as we bias it with the DC current. Another piece of information that usually vendors are giving is indeed this uh, reversible, the small signal, relative magnetic permeability. Here is the data and here is the fitting which comes up to a expression like this which is a pretty good fit in this region which we are interested in. Now the inductance of an inductor and that will be the differential or small signal inductance will be dependent on the relative total permeability or equivalent permeability, permeability at vacuum or air, cross-section area of the core and square over the total length, magnetic path length. So this will be an expression for the differential or local or small signal inductance. Now the small signal equivalent permeability is a function, as we will see, of the DC current and this is why the inductance will be a function of the DC current. Now the question is of course, what is this equivalent permeability? Now we can find an expression for this uh, permeability by starting with the Faraday's circular law here and times i is equal to the total HDL circular integral and this breaks down in the particular case that we are talking about as H which is kind of the general H with the total length which is equal now to the magnetic field within the ferrite times the length, the magnetic path length of the ferrite plus the magnetic field within the gap times, of course, the length of the gap. Now, the local behavior at a given current can be found by just looking at the perturbation of the current, which will be then equal to the delta B over the total mu. Delta B over the total mu is this magnetic field strength, and this will be for the total or the equivalent behavior of the inductor, while this part 
is the ferrite part, delta B over total mu, including the reversal permeability, is actually H sub F times the magnetic path length of the ferrite, and for air, it'll be like delta B over mu sub zero, air vacuum, times the length of the gap. Now, by doing this, I can get rid of the delta B, and I'm left with this equation, which then can be worked out to be of this form. So the equivalent relative permeability, magnetic permeability, is equal to this expression, and notice that when the reversal permeability is high, that is without DC current, then this term is much larger than L sub G, and we end up with a approximate estimate of the equivalent permeability, relative equivalent permeability, and L sub E times L sub G, the total magnetic path length over the gap length which is very well known, of course. So, the point is that this magnetic permeability, which determines the local inductance, is a function of H. But the question is, how can I get this relationship or the value of this permeability, magnetic permeability, for a given current? So, for a given current, we are going to get some magnetic field within the ferrite which determines the permeability, the reversal rate permeability of the ferrite, and this will determine the total or equivalent permeability of the inductor from which I can calculate the inductance. So let's see what really happens here. If I have a current here, I have a certain B within the ferrite, the same B is also in the gap. H will be different because H depends on the magnetic permeability and since for the ferrite it's much higher, then H will be much lower in the ferrite body, in the core, as compared to the magnetic field within the gap. Now, the relative or reversal permeability is now also a function of I, when I is small, then this per permeability, magnetic permeability, is very high. If, however, I'll drive this core with a much higher current, then B will increase, H will increase, but the reversal permeability will decrease, because I'm sort of going up on the BH curve and the slope is now shallower and therefore the permeability is smaller and therefore the total permeability or the equivalent permeability here will be smaller and therefore the inductance will be smaller. So this is an intricate relationship between all these parameters and the question is how can we derive what we want? What we need is the equivalent permeability mu sub e from which we can calculate the inductance. Rather than trying to solve this set of nonlinear expression, we are suggesting here a strategy which I'll call topside down, which means that rather than starting with a given current and solving for it, we are starting with a given B. We assume a given B. Once you assume a given B, you can calculate H sub F from the BH curve. In knowing B, you can also calculate H sub G, that is the magnetic field within the gap. Knowing these two, you can calculate Ni, and then you can actually continue. So here is a sort of a flow chart of the algorithm that we are talking about. We assume a given B. From B, we calculate H sub F this is from the BH curve and the fitting to the BH curve. We calculate H sub G, which is the magnetic field within the gap by just B over mu sub zero. Then from these two, we calculate Ni. 
From knowing the age within the ferrite, the magnetic field, we can calculate the mu reversal. And this, then, we can link to the current, which we have found an I here. So this algorithm will start with a B, will end with an I, so we have now the relationship between I and all the other parameters. So let's see how it works. And here is an Excel spreadsheet that will do it. We have a selection of magnetic flux density, B, from which we calculate the magnetic field within the gap, just dividing it by mu sub zero. From the BH curve, we get the magnetic field within the ferrite. From these two, we calculate Ni. From the magnetic field without the ferrite, we can get the reversible mu, and then we can then use it to calculate mu sub B, which is the total permeability of the body. And then, of course, we can calculate the inductance. And I is, of course, calculated from here, knowing the number of turns, we know what is I. So, starting with B, we sort of uh, decipher all the relationship, and we get whatever we need, and in particular, the relationship between the inductance and the current. Here are the parameters of a specific core, which we can, of course, change, and these are used in these calculations. Calculation also are using the relationship between the magnetic field and B from the BH curve. Notice that we are expressing H as a function of B and not as usually B as a function of H because we are assuming B and we need to calculate H. And this is a fitting to the reversible permeability uh, from the graph that is given by the manufacturer. Here is a demo how this algorithm works. We have here the table in which we do all the calculations. We are starting with the selection of B's and then we calculate everything as a function of the B. These are the basic parameters of the core. This would be the, the air gap length. In this case it's starting with one millimeter. The total magnetic path length is 73 millimeters, 100 turns, and the core cross-section area is 3 to 0.5 10 to the minus 5 uh, meter squared. So these are just powers as a demonstration. And here we have prepared a number of plots to show the behavior of the various parameter as a function of the current. All are a function of the current. This is the final value actually calculated here. So here we have n times i, ampere turns. Of course, it's linear with the current, uh, times 100. We have the magnetic flux density as a function of the current, the mu reversal of the ferrite, the mu equivalent of the total inductor, magnetic field within the air gap, magnetic field within the ferrite, and then the calculated small signal induct. We start with 100 turns and with these parameters, and we see that the inductance is uh, 400 microhenry. We see that it starts to saturate at about 3 amp, and um, here it starts to go down because this, is, this inductance is following the equivalent permeability. We see the magnetic field within the ferrite at the very beginning is very small because mu of the ferrite the permeability is high. So when you divide B by this large number, you get a small magnetic field uh, strength. And then as uh, the current goes up, then the reversal permeability becomes smaller and therefore the magnetic field within the ferrite is becoming larger. So let's uh, do some changes here. Let me start off by changing the number of turns to 10 turns. And what we see here is that immediately the inductance went down by a factor of 100 because it's n square and I've changed n by 10 times. So from 400 it's about 
four. The point at which the inductance starts to go down is now at a much higher current because what is important is n times i ampere turns and since I have uh, changed the uh, turns uh, made them much I mean 10 times smaller then the current now is 10 times larger and this reflects also here and this is pretty much the same let's now reduce the gap very much almost no gap okay that's a very small number so it's practically almost like no gap and here what I'm getting is that very quickly the reversal permeability is going down because now we have no gap so we just uh, rely on the BH curve and with a relatively low H we get to high B therefore the permeability goes down very quickly now the magnetic field within the ferrite starts to go up very early because we are very early changing the permeability and of course uh, the inductance drops very quickly at fairly low current because we are saturating the core very quickly so this shows how this uh, algorithm works so in this uh, video we presented a method in which starting with first principle we can calculate L sub D that is the incremental inductance of an inductor which is biased by a DC current by top-down algorithm that calculates all parameters from an assumed B we start with the B and then calculate everything else and therefore then we get the relationship between current and all the other parameters this brings me to the end of this presentation i thank you very much for your attention i hope you have found this uh, video of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future thank you very much